dances to music first, always. We are unstoppable. Open the frontiers to make people meet people. Music is not fireworks. Music is feeling. You're good to go. Hello and welcome back to Vote for the Music, the Eurovision podcast. I'm Benjamin Windybank. And I'm Tadeusz Tiswak. And today we're back with our quick five reviews. Yes, the third day in the row. And we're taking a look through the first half of the first semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2024. And today, going alphabetically, we land on Ireland with their entry, Doomsday Blue by Bambi Fug. Let's take a listen to the song, shall we? I've said it prior and I'll say it again, it's already a massive step up that Ireland is not sending an upbeat pop anthem performed by a boys band this year. And it's not just that. Ireland, although yes, that's what Ireland entered last year, an upbeat pop anthem by a boy band, they have been entering generic pop for quite a while. Now there's a certain style to sort of generic Irish pop, they're very much always seeming to try and hark back to the Louis Walsh era of pop domination of the 90s and noughties. And that's just not where the Eurovision Song Contest is at. And they've not been doing it very successfully for a very long time. Last year they went all out on a boy band. This year, however, after years and years of it not working, even though we had them in the national final, for whatever reason, this year something entirely different shone through. And that's why we have Bambi Fug representing Ireland. Something unlike anything else that has ever represented any country at the Eurovision Song Contest before, in my opinion. That alone, however, doesn't um, yet make Do- Umsday Blue a good song. Is it even a song at all? Frankly, I find it far more akin to the musical performance that you may see in theatre. A lot of focus in the performance is put on the choreography and general visual storytelling. Shouldn't the sound be the main aim mean of expression in a song? Oh yes, and I think even Bambi Fug themselves would admit that this is far more a performance than a song from everything from the stage makeup to the lighting to the choreography this is a performance for your eyes and the song is secondary now that could be a good thing that could be a bad thing it depends on the side of the fence you are on but this very much is a performance now, sadly, on the National Final, on the Late Late Show's Eurozone special, the camera work and lighting and set and sound design and God knows everything to buy RTE for that show wasn't particularly good. And it wasn't just Bambi Fug's performance that seemed horrendous. It was also absolutely everyone else's from the most basic pop songs to the most out there stuff like what Bambi Fug did. So I wouldn't necessarily judge this song entirely on that performance, but a performance in the same way with all of the miracles we have at SVT will be presented on the Eurovision Song Contest stage in May. So expect the same thing happening, but potentially presented in a far better medium to be able to experience it. That being said, it still has two parts, a refrain and a very unorthodox breach which explodes into the a crescendo full of percussive instruments in the end. To me, however, personally, I'm not a big fan of this style of music. I never have been. This was never going to appeal to me. And I think it sounds like absolute chaos. There isn't much of an actual song here. I think there's a few elements that work. Most of all, it's just a bit of a mess and i'm not sure when it comes to european audiences that yes sometimes go for alternative stuff but when alternative stuff does well it's always the most slickly produced cleanest most sort of styled up version of alternativism and doomsday blue isn't that it's very raw it's very harsh it's very rough around the edges 
And for a lot of people, that's what's great about it. But I'm not necessarily sure that's going to capture the voting public in the same way a lot of people, especially from Ireland, who are very much behind their entry, believe it will. To me, it is just chaos. There is order to this chaos, and that is what ultimately makes Doomsday Blue a song, not a noise. While this very aggressive style, with a distinct arc of traditional melody, isn't too much to my liking, and it is in fact my least favorite of the first half of the first semi-final. Yes, I would agree. This just, I don't think it's very good, I don't think it's very strong, and I really don't think people are going to come out and vote for it. Especially in this semi-final, there are other alternatives to the semi-final that people are going to rally behind, namely something like Croatia. And this, to me, just doesn't seem like it's going to give Ireland much of a chance of qualifying, if not zero chance of qualifying, let's be honest. Because I just don't think it's going to appeal to many people. Now, if we go back to 2019, to Tel Aviv, to a similar situation, we had Portugal's entry that year, Tel Aviv. Now, this was a very popular fan favourite at the time. People really, really liked it, the fandom. And it was getting up and up in the odds. And people thought, oh, it's a sure qualifier. It was going to get great result in the Ocean Star Contest. And it was a complete mess. It was completely chaotic. If you look at that song, there's almost no structure to it. It's probably as out there as Doomsday Blue is. It's, a, it's not sort of metal in sort of the way Doomsday Blue is. It's very much sort of a traditional Portuguese thing, but with electronic elements and like but i think there's a very very strong argument to be made at doomsday blue it's like a 2024 version telling reverse and that absolutely bombed the voting public and the joys both of them did not understand that song whatsoever it did not qualify for the final and in fact it finished 35th overall i'm fairly confident that that is what is going to happen to Ireland this year. That's what's going to happen to Doomsday Blue. It's going to be another run round of Tele Mavis. And I think once again, Ireland will not be in that grand final. Honestly, maybe I'll be eating my words here, but I think there's zero chance of them being there. I cannot agree with my co- host's assertion that this song holds no chance of qualifying. Is its qualification assured? No. This song may disconnect with casual audiences just as much as it initially disconnected with many of the fans. However, it also has a shot of capturing their hearts. The question is, what will Europe's opsy in Bambi tax performance first? Order or chaos? And that's all for now. Those are our thoughts on Ireland's entry for the Ocean Song Contest 2024. We'll see how that does on the 7th of May in Malmö. So until the next time, please remember to follow us everywhere you possibly can. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, you know the drill by now. Check out our website, keep up to date with everything, and look out at your podcast feed tomorrow, where we'll be covering Lithuania's entry for this year's Eurovision Song Contest. So until then, thank you, and remember to vote for the music. This is... To music first, always. We are unstoppable. Open the frontiers to make people meet people. Music is not fireworks. Music is feeling. You're good to go. This is Vote for the Music, the Eurovision podcast.